Connecticut is where color, warmth, and individuality come together to redefine luxury living. From whimsical treasures to vibrant mixes of old and new, each home you'll see today exudes eclectic charm. Traditional principles blend seamlessly with modern flourishes, while casual luxury defines the Connecticut lifestyle. Join us as we explore the creativity and style that makes Connecticut's homes truly unique. I'm Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and we're now offering a membership plan that gives our supporters early and exclusive access to new videos. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Roz. You're here at my home in Los Angeles? Come on in, I can't wait to show you around. With this membership, we invite you to open more doors, discovering new homes, rooms, and personalities available only to those with the keys to our guest house. You'll be part of a community of people who are just as passionate as you are about interior design. To access all of this exclusive content, simply click the Join button below to become a member today. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Joanna. Welcome to our home in Connecticut. Come on in. I'm Joanna Buchanan and I have a business in home. I'm a designer and um, I design tabletop, home decor, and I especially love doing Christmas ornaments. I'm based in Wilton, Connecticut, which is a town that I had never heard of um, before we started looking for a house in Connecticut. Um, and my husband and I pulled up actually, and we fell in love with this house. It was completely derelict, overgrown. It's 18, early 18, I think it's 1816 or something it was built. Um, and it's got some newer extensions um, that were done in the 60s. And what I love about the house is that it's set in really beautiful gardens and it's sort of set on a hill. So from all the windows, you see greenery and you see nature from pretty much everywhere in the house. We did so much to this house and my husband is a contractor, so we both love the romance of a derelict uh, rundown um, place. But we also both, I think, have a very similar vision of what we think, what we know things can be. So when we first uh, saw this place, um, everything was really dark, weird blue carpet everywhere. The walls were navy. It was a very, very dark house. Um, and there was uh, wood, a lot, a lot of natural wood. And when we when we saw it, we knew both immediately what we wanted to do. We wanted it to feel like a garden inside and we wanted to paint everything white. My husband's a big, let's paint everything white. And I knew I wanted to really make it, um, I really wanted it to feel colorful and optimistic and modern. I didn't want it to feel a little bit sort of like an old English estate. I didn't want that feel. Um, and so we moved really quickly. Um, my husband's guys came in and, you know, within two weeks, pretty much floors were sanded, paint, blah, blah, blah. We'd ripped things out and changed things around. But fundamentally, the structure of the house stayed the same. Most of what we did was cosmetic. Well, new kitchen, new bathrooms, I guess that, yeah, there was a lot of work. But, um, and he said to me, the electrician's coming tomorrow. Have you picked your lights? And I was like, no. So I was running to open light stores, you know, nearby trying to find something. Um, so we moved quickly. And that was, that was nice. So I was born in the Philippines. I grew up in Hong Kong. I went to school in England. And then I moved to New York, worked in New York, um, and also worked a lot in India as well, um, traveling to India multiple times for months on end. So I think I have such a 
global view of the world. I feel like all these visual elements have distilled themselves into my brain. And when I'm designing now, I really pull from that. I, I do very little kind of academic research. I really am looking into myself and reflecting on the things I've seen and um, pulling all those different influences into my work. So I loved the bling of Hong Kong and the gold in Hong Kong. I love the textiles and the amazing color in India. I love now being in um, Connecticut and having my garden be a huge influence on my work. And um, obviously city living both in Hong Kong and New York, um, that sort of hard edged glamour is, is how I imagine those cities. And I always think of that too when I'm designing. So this is our reading room and it's actually our children that named it this because when we moved into this house we weren't sure what this space was going to be used for and um, very very initially both children found this the room that they wanted to sit and read in and so as my husband and I were encouraging every form of reading we were like go for it we're going to call it the reading room and so the name has kind of stuck and what I like about it is that there's no tv in here it's very quiet it's got beautiful light and um, we've got some really cool vintage um, library carts that we use um, for our books, which we've out completely outgrown now. So we need to find more vintage library carts for that. Um, we've got a brilliant old um, fireplace here. It doesn't work. So we filled it with kind of plants and color, which I love. And then we painted everything white, um, the high gloss white when we moved in. It was, as I said, it was really dark. There was a lot of dark wood. Um, and I love just taking these really old distressed beams and painting them high gloss. I think it's so fresh looking. Some of my favorite pieces of furniture are in here. These are vintage chairs that um, we picked up at flea markets and then we lacquered them in these really, in this one we lacquered in this fabulous um, sort of semi uh, gloss turquoise and then did the upholster upholstering to match, which I love. And then this one is so cool. I had this um, piece of vintage um, Indian fabric from my travels. And I loved the idea of taking a very sort of traditional preppy cane chair and upholstering it in um, beautiful Indian textiles. And then this is a funny piece. My husband is um, a big lover of quirky things. It's actually a coffee table made from skateboards. So it's, I love the mix of all of these kind of funny bits in here. Um, this is um, a cabinet that I had from my apartment in London. I got that at one of the, I think Portobello Market or something. And I had the glass top cut for it. And I love all these things on top. They're just so, it's an, um, an eclectic mix. This is such a, this I think sums me up probably because this is, it should have a very traditional kind of Roman bust on the top of this marble pedestal, but I love it with the Buddha on top. So I think that juxt juxtaposition of classical and slightly hippie Indian Eastern vibe, it just, to me that, I just love what this stands for. Nothing to as it should be. Um, we've got beautiful light in this room, as you can see, and the windows look out onto um, some of the back garden and this really cool gold glass ball that we bought at a vintage shop in Connecticut that actually belonged to, what's the name of the producer with the red hair? Ron Howard. So Ron Howard used to have an estate in Connecticut and apparently Chuck, you know, sold it all off and we bought his beautiful gold ball. And as we go through the house, you will see I love, love, love round things and I love um, balls in all different sort of iterations. So I love, love, love this room and everyone who comes in here is firstly just like, oh my God, I can't believe you made such a bold choice with the wallpaper, which we'll see. But I think to me it is absolutely the garden inside. And then this was something, um, the fireplace that we put in when we moved in, there was the weirdest fireplace um, um, and mantelpiece, mantelpiece that didn't have a shelf. And I was like, oh my God, that's the ultimate accessorizing opportunity is a shelf above a fireplace. So we bought this fireplace, I think from somewhere like Home Depot, but then used um, the English Paints of Europe paint to get, the, get this amazing green color. Um, these are all mirrors that I've collected um, over the years from London, actually mostly London and some New York. And then these are 
pieces that Brad and I both, we literally always fall in love with the same thing and each other, oh my God. <laughs> Um, but we saw these um, gold pine cones and just loved them. And then this is um, one of Brad's old pieces. God knows who this guy is, but um, he's kind of cool up here. And I just love the mixing of the gold and the silver. I love all the different textures on here. And I work really hard to keep the plants alive because it is not easy. Um, this is actually something that Brad found on the street. Um, and I think it's so pretty. Again, the balls, the round things. Um, and I love this. It's a vintage one. We had it rewired, so it's really cool. And then over in this corner, we have, um, this is actually a garden table that um, we brought inside. Um, and I just, we collected these funny things on here. These are Hubble telescopes, apparently. Um, and I think both of, we, we saw them and I think we got completely scammed because they were so expensive and we were like, you know what, we didn't really need to buy the Hubble telescope to have um, in our house, but it's a good story. But we bought them before we had kids and we were sort of, you know, had money to spend on things like that. This is a cool um, lamp that I found actually in Brad's garage before we got married. And then I had this um, bronze, um, brass lampshade uh, made for it and so many people come in and they're like oh my god where can I get a brass lampshade made and the place that I had it made in the city has gone out of business so it's not there anymore which is a shame um, and then oh more balls over here in this corner oh and this is actually um, this is one of my trays from the new collection and I always like to put things that I've designed into the house to see if they work if the colors work because my collection is very much an expression of my personal aesthetic, obviously. And so if things work in the house, then they're probably gonna work in the collection. So I love this new ECAT tray, and I love the play of the ECAT with the stripe. So this is another uh, piece that people seem to love when they come into the house. It's um, designer guild fabric on, I think it's a Mitchell Gold Ottoman. Um, and it has really withstood the test of time and children and a lot of children jumping up and down on it. So I would say to people, don't be scared of using velvet and precious fabrics because sometimes they really are just completely fine. Um, in this corner, I've got my little collection of balls. So these are some of my glass balls that um, I've collected over the years. And just, I also love glass. Um, I just love the way it takes color. I love the translucent um, aspect of it. And I love playing that against this vintage mirror again with the circles. This is a piece that I bought in a market and then I painted it gold and kind of distressed it. And I've had this with me for such a long time. Um, I also love to have lots of textiles around. So we always have um, Indian quilts and I've got a lovely cashmere um, throw there so that when you're watching TV, you can, there's always tons of, we call them tuckles, to kind of snuggle in with and um, just get really kind of cozy with. So um, we bought these lights at a vintage store um, and they're a pair, but a kind of mismatched pair. So we have one here and one over there, but we made them a proper pair by having the matching shades made in the black um, gloss. And then actually, this is another street find. So um, it was funny as I was kind of going through the house thinking about what I was gonna say, I was like, oh my God, all of our furniture is from the street. Um, but this was another street find that we just painted black. It's one of those vintage um, magazine kind of racks, but I love it in here because it's kind of light and airy and it doesn't take up too much space. It's funny because I think I read somewhere once upon a time that as you get older, you do have this inherent desire to be closer to nature. And um, I read it when I was young and thought, oh my God, they're insane. I'm never going to leave the city. But actually, uh, my husband and I were both drawn to having more space. Um, and the beauty of nature, I think you do not get in the city. So the transition was difficult at first because I didn't drive. So I was, I moved here and I was like stuck in the middle of nowhere in a garden, which was beautiful, but still not driving. Um, but I, we still spend a lot of time in the city. We still have a place there. So we're back and forth quite a lot. And I do find when I come home now, I think it's age, um, that I am so grateful to just be surrounded by all this 
green and beauty. Um, and for me, gardening has was a hobby when I was growing up in, well, when I was in England at my parents' house. And now gardening is one of my um, massive hobbies as well. So um, I think that has eased the transition. Okay, so this room I love because there's light coming in from both sides. And it is absolutely, you feel like you're inside outside with all this glass, it's so cool. And we use this, again, a multi-purpose room. We use it as um, a kind of dumping ground for a lot of the sports equipment and things like that. But it also um, houses our music area. So that's where the kids do their piano and we've got guitars and stuff there. Um, and also we use this as a dining room. So actually it was so fun. I got to set up the table for a spring um, lunch, brunch, whatever. So it was normally there's more stuff on here, but it was nice to clean it up and, um, and really sort of set the scene for a pretty sort of spring brunch. Um, this is an area where I play with a lot of my textiles. So these um, are all things that I've designed, all the pillows in our collection. And I love to play with them and see what works together, what colors are working together, what fabrications work together. And it's very impactful and I do change it seasonally. Um, so this is definitely more of a spring vibe. Sometimes I'll do something a little bit darker and moodier, but this is definitely all about fresh greens and gorgeous pinks. So that is my spring color palette. Um, I love the lights in this room. Um, they have this beautiful sort of, they're really oversized. They've got this really cool uh, natural texture. And I love that against the kind of slightly more glamorous um, mirror that we painted matte white. We painted the piano white, like we'll paint anything. <laughs> we give us anything and we'll paint it white. Um, and then we've just got some cool pieces in here. These, um, this is a vintage armoire that holds a whole host of Lego and um, photo albums and stuff. And then some of the cool lights that I've had. And then my husband is always picking up artwork. And actually, as I was getting the room ready yesterday, I was like, wait a minute, there's a painting up there that I've never seen before. And he had obviously just come in and just chucked it up there and hoped I wouldn't notice, and I didn't. Um, but yeah, so he's always finding paintings and just sort of popping them in the house. But actually, some of these paintings are his. Like, this is one of um, his paintings, which I absolutely love. And um, this is another one of his. So I love having his paintings around the house as well. So it's just, you know, it's a mix. So I was having a play with some of our new spring collection and um, trying to decide if I was setting a spring or having a spring brunch, what, what would I do? So I loved bringing in um, or being inspired by really this beautiful color palette of the flowers, the pale, pale pink and this really lovely lilac. Um, and obviously green is a huge color for me. I love it. And then this, these are some of our new um, pieces in the collection. So this is our bow napkin, which is actually kind of fabulous because it has the bow tied onto the back or stitched onto the back. So you tie the bow yourself. Um, and this is our melamine collection, which I was inspired by some of my mum's old china. But we put in our butterfly into the um, pattern and then we also the stripey bee is a big part of the Joanna Buchanan collection. So we also put the stripey bee in there. Oh, and here's the stripey bee as well. So this is, this is the bee embroidered on straw. And then this is one of our beautiful new tablecloths, which is the golden bee. So this is white linen with these beautiful um, golden bees kind of embroidered all over the tablecloth. So I was feeling very springy and um, loving this palette of kind of acid, pastels they're not sickly sweet they've got a little bit more punch to them um, this is the aqua with um, the pink which I love that color combination I think it's really it's strong it's not insipid but it's not too bold or overwhelming um, and then actually this is one of our new um, capice trays that I've designed and I love the kind of luminescent um, look of the capice and then these are our candlesticks. So you can see like I really try to use what I design to make sure that it is useful, it is beautiful, and um, hopefully we'll set an amazing table um, and you can have lots of fun parties with our, with our things. It's so funny, I did a career day at school this week um, for my children, so I'm very much in career mode at the moment. Um, I 
um, knew I always loved um, fashion and design. And even as a child, I was always, you know, tie dyeing my mother's sheets and turning them into tablecloths and painting fabric and decorating cardboard boxes for my stuffed animals, houses and stuff like that. So I always had a passion for design. I followed that through at university. Um, and then through an internship, got a job in London and worked in London in a corporate environment for six years, moved to New York and worked in a multiple corporate environments as a designer. Um, and then I actually, I lost my job um, around eight years ago. And um, a friend of mine who I had worked with said, oh, come to and, you know, do something for me for One Kings Lane. And I said, oh, you know, not really interested, taking a bit of a break. And she said, no, 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 you have to. But, and I said, only if it's my own brand, only if it's Christmas ornaments. And she was like, you're out of your mind. You've never, you know, you don't know anything about the Christmas market. But I said, no, that's what I want to do. God knows where that came from. Um, but anyway, and it started with, so One King's Lane was my very first um, customer. And then it just grew. You kind of get a bit of an ego about things. And you're like, oh, people like what I'm doing as, as for myself, not working for someone else. Um, and the business started, as I said, eight, nine years ago. And now we're with amazing clients around the world. We're in Neiman Marcus, we're in Bloomingdale's. We have a very deep relationship with Harrods in the UK. And we've got some fabulous boutiques um, in Monaco and um, South America. So it, it's an amazing, I feel like everything's come full circle because I feel like a child of the world and now our brand is a global brand. So it's cool. Okay, so this is my studio, which is actually incredibly tidy. And my children who are always, you know, shaming me for having such a messy studio would actually agree that it's tidy. Although I know to the naked eye, everyone's probably looking at it going, oh my God, how can anyone work in a space like this? But I have everything here that I need. Um, and I know where everything is, which is actually um, does sometimes impress people. But I have all my um, inspiration. I have ideas on the go. I have samples in here. Um, and I think part of the way I work is having the juxtaposition of things um, just kind of lying around. And sometimes as a creative, you'll be like, oh, my God, I never thought of putting that with that. And it's only just because you had those two things sitting in your office at the same time together and it just kind of jogs your memory or jogs your brain in a way that wouldn't have been jogged if you were in a really spotlessly clean place. Um, so anyway, I have um, all my working things on here. It's kind of divided by sections. I have a lot of my vintage pieces here. You can see these are works in progress. I have tons and tons of um, reference. I mean, this is just like an Aladdin's cave for someone that loves color and texture. These are you know, like a bajillion uh, ribbon options from my trips to India. I have all my Pantone color books and all my um, reference books. I have images of all my photo shoots that we've done, packaging, again, more textiles and, um, and just, you know, things that will inspire me that I'll kind of dig through and find. Um, and then this is my, oh my God, please don't look at this. We'll just do a real slow pan across that because I, I meant to tidy it and I didn't. But um, I've got some really pretty things over here that I keep meaning to kind of do. I keep meaning to get a cool lampshade for um, that light. I've got some nice plants in here. I also love dead flowers as well. So you can see the hyacinths are a little bit dead, but I, can't, I love the smell so much. I refuse to get rid of them until they're completely falling apart. Um, and then I love all the details in here. Like I've got my pens in my pots. This is some of the jewelry um, that I'm working on with some of the stones that I've got um, that I'm playing with. And then I always love to have fresh flowers in here as well. So that really gives me a lift. And this light um, we got for our wedding from ABC Carpet. And to me, it is just one of the most beautiful things in the world. Um, I love, again, the glass the orange in there is so strong. I love it. Um, and then this table we actually had made for the studio space so that it's got the work countertop and then all this amazing shelving underneath. Um, Cause you can see, I do need a lot of, a lot of space for my things. Yeah. I think people come to the house and they always say, I feel like I'm on holiday. And, um, 
one day, I mean, we, we've got a really pretty pool, a really old kind of like black pool and a really cool old pool house. And people kind of go out there and they just can't believe that, to your point, they're just an hour from New York. Um, but we work a lot in the garden. We really try and create this feeling of um, just beauty. We really do. It, it matters to us. We like living um, surrounded by beautiful things and having the greenery so close. So I think for me, I love um, color. That's number one. I love pattern and I love the play of color and pattern. And I hate things that look too cookie cutter. And I like the feeling of an eclectic layered home. Um, Brad and I, that Brad's my husband and I both have collected pieces over the years. So things in here mean something to us. And to me, it's about putting it in a, putting things together in a way that works, not buying things to fit the situation. So this is the kitchen in our house. You can see the ceilings get a little bit lower. Um, but again, we painted everything white, white, white. This is one of um, Brad's paintings, which I love. I think it's such a brilliant um, spot for it. And I love the drama of the black and the olive. So we put in the kitchen, um, it's Ikea. So high, low, um, with the wooden um, butcher block top and the cool kind of um, gray cabinets. I love the warmth of that. And then we put in, um, I, we originally put in the tiles and I couldn't figure out what else we wanted to do. I just, I, the tiles were cool, but it wasn't enough. So then I think about two years ago, I said, you know what, let's put a shelf in because I love the look of a shelf in a kitchen. And then let's just go bonkers with the wallpaper, which is what we did. And when Brad saw it, he was like, there's a key in there. It's like crazy. But I was like, I love it because it feels again like the garden coming inside. And then on our center island, I just have all this greenery. So you can see I'm not really, it's not really a chef's kitchen. I would say it's a gardener's kitchen. Um, and then I've got, you know, things that I'm trying to keep alive here. I'm not the best houseplant person, but I'm doing my best. Um, and then we've got more books. Um, again, like we just can't seem to have enough space for all our books. And um, this is a really cool um, table that I found on eBay. And then we had the, um, the plexiglass cut to size and shape. And then these are just kind of fun Ikea chairs. But I love how transparent this whole corner is. It just feels very light. And um, I think that's what we needed in this room. And then this is a really cool piece um, that we got. I can't remember where we got it, but we replaced the, it's like a vintage filing cabinet. But we replaced the, um, the panels with mirrors so that it was reflecting of light. And then we've got our bar in here, which is kind of fun. Um, and then I'm not going to show you what's in the other, in the other um, sections, but it's just like kitchen stuff. Um, and then this is a really lovely piece that Brad made um, years ago before we met, but I, we added the glasses kind of later. So that's, and I like to think that that's me and that's him. And I like having these moments of very sort of simple, quiet, textural um, feeling and color in amongst all the craziness of the colors of the house, you know? So I think having the, 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 the quiet moments is nice. And um, I, really, I didn't take down, my son just turned 13. And I love these uh, crazy um, silver balloons. But normally this corner is a little bit quiet because we just have one sort of single lamp. But again, silver and gold, love it together. So anyway, yeah, so that's our kitchen. And then, oh, this is a really um, beautiful light that I found. I think this was an eBay find as well. I needed to find something that was really shallow um, because the ceilings are low in here. But I wanted, again, I wanted something really sparkly and really um, dramatic. And I just love that. We actually ended up shipping it from Germany, I think. Um, but it is so perfect in here. Those giant kind of gobby glass stones at the top. It's so cool. So my obsession with wallpaper has not stopped and continues everywhere. So we ended up wallpapering up the stairs and in the hallway upstairs, this fabulous um, blue and white stripe, which I just think looks so fresh. And it was so funny. I realized when I just was doing this, I'm wearing the blue and white stripe shirt as well. So I feel like I'm blending in. Um, but I love all the different angles of the wallpaper when you start cutting it around the corners, but we literally wallpapered everywhere we could.
when I set about designing a space, I always think about the mood that I'm trying to create. Is it moody? Is it dramatic? Is it, you know, cozy? And I think this house is very optimistic feeling. And I think it's the color and the light in here that's so lovely. And when people come in, they I love that reaction of like, wow, people don't expect an old house to look like this. So I think I love the, the happiness about the house. I think it's just got a really good vibe. So this is the bedroom and it's not very big, but I love it because it just is so light and bright. You can see we don't have any curtains. I love going to sleep at night, seeing the moon outside and the stars. And I love waking up to the natural light and the birds singing. And um, this is totally, um, I would, it's my sanctuary. I come up here, I find it so relaxing. I love my bed. I love all the textiles on here. There is, we are not a, a, a white bed person, but these are things that I've had made from my travels to India. These are textiles that I picked up over the years. This is a really cool piece because this is um, some, a piece of fabric that I found in Japan um, when I was there and I had it upholstered onto the Lucite base. So I love, again, the juxtaposition of a sort of 60s Lucite piece with crazy Japanese um, vintage OB fabric on there. Um, and I, these glass balls, again, glass balls were given to me um, or given to us as wedding presents, which I think are so lovely in here. And really the color inspiration for the room came from this gorgeous vase, which is the green, the orange, um, and the pink. And I just think this color palette is so gorgeous. I love it. And um, you can see I look out over the garden so I can see what's going on. And I really feel very connected to, um, to our outside space in this room. We have rugs in the reading room and the TV room, but like upstairs, I, we painted all the floorboards white high gloss. And I love, um, I love the feel of that and I love the texture of it. Um, so yes, I think in smaller rooms, um, like this bedroom, we didn't need a rug. I think I like the sort of feeling of sort of spareness and the extreme amount of white in here, I think is really nice. I have no idea, but I mean, my husband is six foot and he can get in and he's okay. I'm five foot six, so it's probably uh, seven foot probably, I think. So I'm gonna quickly show you my son's room because he, it's a work in progress, but he's just moved into this room. We're just decorating it for him. And he organized um, and picked out all the shelves. He decided he wanted these shelves to show his shoes. Um, you can see how neat and tidy he is. Everything's very organized. Um, and he started doing some drawings of shoes. Here are his shoe cleaning kits. Like it doesn't end with the shoes. So anyway, um, he is so thrilled to have this space and to have it um, be his own. And I'm so happy that he's decorating it how he wants it. Home means to me somewhere where I can truly relax. Although here we are filming in the home today. <laughs> so it's, it's a little bit of a workspace too, but I love at the end of the night, um, closing the gate and I love a fire and it's really somewhere where you can relax and read a book, be with the family. And I like that there's quiet times and there's busy times too. You know, there's when everyone's around and it's noisy and fun and it's kind of slightly chaotic, that's brilliant. But I also love it when it's really quiet and really still. Um, so I think, you know, home is a space that can embrace all aspects of your life really. On today's episode of Homeworthy, we're bringing you to Connecticut for an inside look into interior decorator Libby Cameron's layered and colorful home. An avid animal lover, Libby has incorporated vibrant wildlife motifs around every corner. From printed fabrics and brass figurines to artwork and dogs, not to mention her litter of adorable Labrador puppies. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hello, Homeworthy. I'm Libby. Welcome to my Connecticut house. Come on in and look around. And I'll give you a tour.
I'm Libby Cameron. Um, I have been living in this house for about six years. Believe it or not, I've only really lived in three houses in my entire life, which is kind of a frightening thought. But at any rate, um, I have been in the design business since 1983, I believe. So 40 years, and I do mostly residential projects all over the country, some in the Bahamas, some abroad. I think that this house is a reflection of me because I think I love color, I love whimsy, I love the unexpected and the sort of quirky things that happened in life. So you'll see that um, most of what's in this house has been collected or uh, repurposed somehow, and most of the pieces have come from friends and people I used to work with. I've actually bought very little. It's all just sort of comes with me wherever I go. There are 13 dogs right here now in the house. Six are permanent, and there are seven puppies. I may keep a little girl, um, but I had a dog, or got a dog about 20 years ago who I just adored. He was my best friend and I don't know, just one animal that really stayed with me in life. And he was beautiful to boot um, from a very good line of Labradors. His, his grandmother was the grand champion of uh, Westminster um, in the Labrador division. But um, so I got, his name was George. So I got George a wife named Fig and have had litters. Now of the six dogs I have, they're all descendants. I have great granny down to great grandchildren. Um, and I just love it. I love the experience of whelping a litter of puppies and, and you know, seeing how tiny they are and how she responds, whichever mother it is. And, you know, in this world where everything is so crazy and there's so much negativity and so much sparring with politics, there's something so pure and wonderful about a litter of puppies and the mother's response and just life at its best, life at its simplest and purest. This is the foyer. Um, which hasn't changed in shape, but when I first bought the house, this was a uh, slatish stone kind of floor, and there was an Italianate sort of banister and railing, and it's a very difficult space to put a rug in because of the shape, and it's, you know, you don't want to put a rug this way, you can put one that way, but then that has, that area has nothing to go on. So I put in a wood floor and it was white for years. And then during COVID, my friend Matthew Terrell uh, came over and painted it. Um, sort of a fantasy marble, whatever it is. <laughs> but um, you know, all of the things that I have in this house are, have sentimental value to me. I mean, the, this cow was given to me by John Roselli. I just love him. I love his eyes and, and sort of the softness of his muzzle. I think he's so sweet. This piece um, Albert Hadley gave to me, it was, I just remember working on it forever to get this, this tortoise shell finish that he did and, you know, his discussion about sizing it so that it wasn't so big, that it wasn't, you know, it was realistically looking like a piece of tortoise shells because tortoise shells aren't that big. Um, and this little hat uh, umbrella stand was from John Roselli and it has sort of my odd collection of walking sticks for the most part. I lose every umbrella I ever get. Um, the wallpaper was one that I worked with Albert designing in the 80s for a client um, and it's named after her, Sue Ellen, um, made by Xena Studios and you know, they're just little things I collect along the way. I think that little mirror Mrs. Parrish gave me of this sunflower, which I've always loved. Um, I don't know what it was originally. It was probably on the, I don't know, maybe it was on a, a carving of, in a, a wall carving or something in a church. I don't know where it came from. But, um, you know, when I see something, I 
go for it. So um, this is a hat rack I found in Maine at a funny little antique shop that doesn't exist anymore, sadly. But I love the, the wheel back shape of it um, with all of its, you know, sort of, I mean, it's nothing special, but it just, I, again, I don't think things have to be priceless to have character. When I first moved into this house, there was, there were a pair of doors. This hallway or this foyer had many, many doors. There was a pair of doors here, a pair of doors into the living room. And this was a pair of doors with absolutely no light. So I took out those doors and had a Dutch door, a Dutch door made and put in the side lights just to get the light in the house. <coughs> oh, sorry, dogs. <laughs> part of the house. Well, I've always have been an animal lover and I was convinced as a child that I would be a veterinarian. And I worked at veterinary hospitals in Washington, D.C. where I grew up. And then I worked as a zookeeper at the National Zoo in Washington. And then I actually got an internship for six months at Gerald Durrell Zoo off the coast of France on the island of Jersey. Um, and had a sort of f pretty scary experience there where I got um, caught in a gorilla pen with baby gorillas and essentially lost my nerve to stay with animals. Also, being a zookeeper, I didn't f think sort of hit all the bases for me. So uh, I came back and I moved to New York and I worked for a caterer for a little while and then I worked for the Central Park Conservancy. And as a child, I couldn't even ask for my allowance. So asking, trying to fundraise was not my strong point. So then I um, was sort of at a crossroads. I had just gotten married and I was very close to an uncle, Rory Cameron, who um, lived for the most part in the south of France. And I was very, very close to, and he happened to be coming to New York. so. I asked him sort of to help and help me figure out what I should do in life. And he immediately said, oh, you should get into interior design. You would love it. So uh, I, he encouraged me to reach out to Sister Parrish, who was someone um, whose name I knew as a child. And she had worked for my grandmother's sister as well as my grandparents. And so I invited myself for tea. Um, and she very firmly said, we never hire the children of clients. And um, Albert Hadley joined us and said, oh, go to, back to school, get learn something about design. Because all I could really knew about is animals. And you know, I had absolutely no experience with design. I didn't know um, what a braid versus a picture hook was. But I... Um, I took his advice and I went to Parsons and I, Rory said, keep going, keep going, see if anything opens up. And luckily I got a phone call one day that they needed some help for me to essentially be a gopher and sit in an apartment um, during an installation and, you know, accept deliveries and supervise, you know, people coming and going and make sure they showed up and that sort of thing. And it turned into a full-time job. So that was 19, early 1983. So this is the living room. Um, and again, these are all things that have just sort of been a part of my life forever. With the, ex you know, I don't think there's anything that, I might've bought that coffee table, but I think everything else is either a family piece or a street find. So when I moved into this house, um, I did recover everything. And this was a fabric that I've always loved that has been discontinued. Um, so I, it was sort of the starting point for the room on top of this panel, um, which is actually a copy of the one that, of three that Mrs. Parrish had in her dining room. Um, in her New York City apartment. I just loved it. It was John Roselli did it. Um, I just love the colors. I love everything, the sort of the whimsy of it. 
these lamps from Christopher Spitzmiller came from a client. Um, I've always loved these pillows made by Robin Goss because she makes things out of string and, and ribbons and they just makes for such a nice texture. Um, but all of the upholstery, none of it's new, it just gets repurposed. Uh, the chaise was from my ex-husband's family. Um, it was in a bedroom upstairs, nobody wanted it, but it's the best place to read. Um, the, this funny little table was Albert Hadley gave me, which I love. Um, I, I'm not sure of the story of it, but there's, I remember him saying something about it coming from the, uh, the, the Duchess of Windsor had a similar table. If not, that was hers. I doubt it was hers, but at any rate. The uh, man was from my um, ex-husband's family's place in Long Island. He was on the porch. And I think he's been repainted many times by different gardeners, but, um, and he must have had something in his hand years ago, but he's just sort of a wonderful character. I don't know if he's a Swami, but he must have been one of the guards for an Indian palace. Um, this funny little piece, this it's not really an apothecary chest. I don't, I don't even think it's decoupage. Yeah, that is decoupage. But it's just a funny thing that I found antiquing one day with Albert Hadley the chairs he gave me. And these dogs, my father gave these to me as a wedding present. And they're stirrup cups, um, a set of six. I just, I've always loved them. And they're, um, this, this one was for spices to put on top of the mulled wine or whatever you would wear, drink at a, an English hunt. Um, these paintings are by my, uh, stepmother's father, but uh, his name was Eugene Leak. I love these Anthony Fry paintings. Albert gave me this little basket of strawberries, which I love. Um, it's just sort of an odd mixture of things. This table belonged to my ex-husband's grandmother. Um, I've had the leather restored a couple of times, but it doesn't, it doesn't it gets bleached by the sun in this room, but it's just sort of this wonderful, strange mercury glass boot table. Um, this screen was from my great aunt's house in Arizona. It was a wreck when I got it after she died. So I had it r restored, but I, I love it. I love the birds and I love the colors in it. And this funny little chair Mrs. Parrish gave to me years ago. Um, I guess it was a sample originally, as was that one, for chair makers to have in their shops so that it didn't, they didn't take up too much space. Um, that bench was a Parrish Hadley design, um, as was this little table. And then these, you know, these other things, I don't know where they came from. I mean, that I know I found with Albert shopping at one point. Um, Mrs. Parrish gave me that pillow. I think Albert gave me this pillow for my birthday one year with the cat, knowing that I loved animals. So everything's, the rug was from Corey Rugs, which doesn't exist anymore in New York City. Um, they gave it to me as a thank you for another rug th that I have found for somebody. My marriage ended in 1995, and I decided that I needed to change my life. So. Um, I have many, many dogs, too many dogs, and wanted more space. But when we lived in Larchmont, we lived on an eighth of an acre, and at that point, I think we had four dogs. And uh, I, I just wanted more space. I wanted lower taxes. I, so I started looking, and I looked at many, many houses. I probably looked at 35 houses, and this house was a dump. I mean, the pond was a swamp. The, you know, the siding was coming off, the driveway was all crumbling. and But I just thought there's something about having a pond that I thought was just wonderful. Um, and I still feel that even though the dogs come in covered in mud many days. But I, um, I don't know, I just really liked the piece of property. So slowly, you know, over the past six years, I've been fixing it up and cutting down trees and 
you know, doing bits and pieces here and there. I mean, cosmetically, I redid the inside, but it's, it's always, I mean, you know, I don't think I'm ever satisfied with the way something looks. It's always an excuse to redo something, but um, it's been fun. It's a good project. Well, I think there, you know, you sort of have to pay attention to the colors, but I don't think there's anything wrong with having a blue chair that has a, you know, pattern on it with the yellow. I mean, I, the more the merrier, in my opinion, you know, as long as they all sort of speak to each other. You know, this is the only entrance to the back of the house, and there's a little terrace out there. Um, and for a long time, I, I really struggled with this room about how to, f to place the furniture. I thought about having a sofa there. At one point, I had a sofa here. But the room got cut in half. And I figured for the amount of times I would use that door, it doesn't make any sense to, you know, not use this end of the room. So it made sense to, to put the sofa there and have another seating group. So, I mean, that was one of the cardinal rules at Parish Hadley is always to get as many seating groups in a room as possible. <laughs> These bookshelves, gosh, I actually painted and gilded these myself in 1983. Um, they were much taller, and when I lived on a, in a loft on Broom Street, there was a finial above them to give you an idea of how high the ceilings were. And sadly, when I moved into this house, I had to cut the base down two inches. But I just, I love them. Rory Cameron had similar ones. They were more diminutive, but they were um, the same kind of pyramid bookcases. And I just love the shape of them. The sculpture is by Gertrude Vanderbilt Whitney, and everyone sort of jokes that he's the texture because it looks like he's texting a phone. But uh, I mean, my guess is that she made this in the 30s or 40s. But um, he's one of her many sculptures that were in my husband's family. I just love him. And this was a mirror from the Parish Hadley collection. Um, so you can see everything is just a big mix. I mean, this is a nothing table that came from my aunt. That table there with all the little boxes on it was, all those boxes were her. I loved her. Um, so I, I kept some of the things that I think meant the most to her, especially she, uh, she was, had racehorses and I've always loved this little silver jockey's cap. Yeah, so these are for my grandson and granddaughter who's on her way. <laughs> and I love this little lion basket with his mane. And I think he's very sweet. And I find this little voice in my head sometimes saying, oh, don't do that because uh, it won't work because, um, but for the most part, you know, it's just guttural. I mean, I think you either understand it or you don't. What do you love the most about this house? I love the amount of color in it. This color always makes me happy. I remember when I first moved to New York, walking by dry cleaners and seeing all of the spools of thread on inside the windows of where the people were repairing clothing for people and just always being mesmerized by all the different colors that were on the boards holding all the little spools of thread. So this is my dining room. Um, it's a pretty bright color, but I love this color. I think it's warm and it's a happy color. And I guess that's always matters to me. These chairs I've had, Albert Hadley actually brought the original back from one of his many trips to Tennessee. Um, and I had them copied and they're mahogany, but I painted them white because I just thought they were too boring in a mahogany finish. Um, and put the leather on. So this leather's got to be got 35 years old, um, but it's held up. Not a classic dining room in that it's so filled with color. I, I fell in love with this rug at, a, at Elizabeth Eakins, and I was lucky enough to be at John Roselli's store in New York when it was on 73rd Street, where I found this elephant who I had to have. Luckily, I have always had a wall big enough to put it on. This bench was a street find. Um, 
I was going to meet a client with Albert Hadley one morning and um, we saw it on the s side of the street and luckily Parrish Hadley had a, we had a car and driver and it was a big station wagon. So Albert and I put it in the back of the station wagon and it needs to be reupholstered, but it will someday. These are copies that John Roselli makes of sconces that Mrs. Parrish had in her entrance hall in New York and I love them. I just think they're such a unexpected shape for a, for a wall sconce. This uh, decoupage is by Apple Bartlett, who is Mrs. Parrish's daughter, and she d makes these incredible decoupage um, creations. I have quite a few of them around the house, but I love them. They're, um, you know, she usually finds pieces of wood that she puts together, and this is just a piece of plywood. But, you know, she works them all in and adds all the different pieces. Um, I happen to love this goat. I saw him at, a, at the gift show one year and just thought he was so sweet. Um, these, these curtains, believe it or not, are from 1983 uh, for a show house I worked on in Southampton with Albert. Um, this was a wallpaper panel that was getting thrown away at Parrish Hadley, so I took it. Um, this, all this blue and white Canton china was from my aunt when she died. She had a collection, so I've sort of placed it around, and I think it's so pretty with this blue mirror chest, which belonged to my ex-husband's family, um, along with the sconces my mother-in-law gave to me years ago, which I love. I just fell in love with him. I saw him on Instagram. He's from some place in Florida, in Palm Beach, West Palm Beach. I can't remember the name of the shop now. But I just thought he was so sweet. There was something about his feet that I loved. They're so sort of round and funny looking. <laughs> um, so this ram during COVID, Mario Buada's pieces were at auction and I just loved this ram. I thought he was so sweet and I thought I was being so smart and saving so much money by driving up to Hudson and putting him in my car, but he didn't fit. So I drove home with him on the top of my car and I think I bent the frame a little bit. So he's sagging in one corner, but I guess that's okay. Um, these lamps I found with, Al with, actually with Gary Hager, who was one of my favorites who worked at Parrish Hadley, um, who died years ago. I adored him. I found this crazy otter at uh, Apple Bartlett's shop in, uh, on Dark Harbor on Islesboro and she did this, this is another one of her decoupage pieces um, that came from a show she did at, at Treage, Bunny and John Roselli's um, shop in New York that closed a few years ago but I just thought it was so wonderful if you, somewhere in here there's a little metal bird, I don't see it now, but I'm not wearing my glasses. Um, but there's, you know, there's a little cat hiding there and a chicken and a goat. It's just, oh, here's the bird. But I think she's just, she's just, you know, she's painted the trees, but this is part of a wallpaper and everything's, it's got three dimensional qualities to it, which I just love. I just love her work. So this is my library. Um, there's one wall of books, but it's uh, my many years of collecting animal prints. Most of them are crooked at the moment, but um, it actually started here with this Jersey cow. I, was at, I went to a boarding school in Massachusetts, and one night we were out late beyond when we should have been out, and I saw this on a barn, and it was propped up against the side and was in terrible disrepair. So I took it, which I shouldn't have done, but I did. And it's always been one of my favorite things. Uh, it was in my room at school, college. It's been with me since 1974. I just love it. Um, but that sort of started this whole collecting. Um, there was a young, there were a couple up in, uh, 
Manchester, Vermont, who had a lot of these prints, and they probably are just from books, but, you know, they're just, everything's been added to it since, you know, this needlework, this is one of Apple Bartlett's little um, decoupage, that's from a dealer in London. People have given me these things over the years. This is a little drawing by a cousin of mine. Um, so I just collect them. Um, things that I love, anything to do with animals. This is a sculpture which I've been meaning to have a base made for by Bruno Romeda that I loved. I bought in the 1980s. I just love this work. I've always wanted to get it higher so you look through it going down the stairs. Um, this cat Albert gave me. Um, it was next to his bed. I just, I've always loved it. And I just, you know, I collect things, anything. Little brass animals, that lamp has the tiger on it. it was something I gave to my ex-husband. You can see everything now. I've run out of, running out of wall space, so I'm hang, starting to hang things on on the bookcases. I mean, there's this wonderful woman named Sarah Battle in England who makes these little decoupage pieces. So I think there's one, two, three, I think there are four of them that I have. I just love her work. And, you know, I've had that creature forever, and then I found the owl lanterns, and then I found a second one at a yard sale, and this is another one of those cats like I have in the living room. But, you know, everything sort of finds a home. I just shove it in a shelf. And I have a thing for owls, so I've got two there, and one there and those two they are one up there anyway but i just anything to do with animals i always love um i love this seal he was um, belonged to a client and she gave him to me a few years ago when she sold her house made by john mm, i'm blanking on his name but i just think he's so sweet um but you know i just mix everything up i mean inexpensive little wicker elephant, the table that, you know, was Gary Hager's at Parrish Hadley that I love, and my giraffe, I know. Isn't he wonderful? He's been with me a long time, too. I think I got him when my youngest was a little girl, and he was in their room, and, you know, no one thought it was fun to take him off to college or to their first apartment, but I was happy to have them with me. Um, I've always loved this, you know, usually you see these garden stools and they're made of, to look like elephants, but this one's a rhinoceros, so I've always loved him. Um, this is a rug made, Albert Hadley always had a lot of the needle uh, hooked zebra rugs. Um, this is one of them from his collection. So as you can see, I mean, there's a cow hooked rug and here's a whale and it's just endless you know endless animals in this house <laughs> these mice uh i don't remember what year it was but parish hadley did a table setting for uh, american ballet theater and we were all had one afternoon where we painted these mice um there were i don't know how many of them but they were on the tables and they held up, somehow, and I don't remember how, they held up a, bo um, a bowl of nuts on every table. That was the centerpiece. And so we had little skirts made for them. And I don't know, I just, you know, the, they just have sentimental value to me. You know, a funny butter dish my daughter gave me. And, you know, this is a chicken that was one of the first things I, uh, Mrs. Parrish's daughter, Apple, made it for um, a show house I did in Far Hills, New Jersey, with Malcolm Forbes, something to do with Malcolm Forbes, I don't even remember now, but many, many years ago. You know, I keep things. I, I'm a pack rat. That cockatiel um, weather vane was from Mario Buada's collection again. It was at Sotheby's, and there was such interest in his sale that I think they called me at 1130 to say it was up. And I got it for nothing because everyone had gone to sleep. But I just thought it was kind of wonderful. Those valances actually um, I had made uh, for the Kipps Bay 
show house room I did, um, and they're the metal, they're tin, and they were made by an auto body shop, um, and then painted by Chuck Fisher, who's a wonderful decorative artist, um, to match the wallpaper, which is in my front hall, but it was that Sue Ellen wallpaper with the stars was the wallpaper used on the walls there. And this is, I love this, these flowers by Livia Chetty, who does, owns that company, The Green Vase, that makes all the wonderful paper flowers. I've actually taken a couple of courses of hers. I love her things. This is my pack. Uh, come here. Come on. Nugget. So March has been chewing on her foot, so she's wearing her her cone of shame, poor dog. Um, but these are, this is, Figgy, come here, Figgy. This is the matriarch. These are all her offspring. Um, this is Liesel and Marta, who were named for the, um, they were named for the Von Trapp children from The Sound of Music, and I never changed their names. Nugget was from a litter last year where uh, the puppies were all named after elves, Santa's elves. Bree was Bree, and her brother was Cheddar, who Todd Romano has. Um, Henry was a solo puppy, and he's a little bit crazy, but he's very sweet. Um, but he's the brother, full brother of Marta and Liesel. I know, it's very exciting. And then we have the newest group. We have, and they're named after herbs and spices. Come on, baby, leave your puppies alone. So you can see they're four weeks old. They're very little. Um, and this is day two in the kitchen. They've just moved from my bedroom. But you have chicory, chive. Uh, who is this? This is parsley, pepper, curry. Oh, and paprika is this little one over there. But they're very, you know, they're, they're just really coming into their own. They're walking and making lots of sweet noises and will leave me in about a month, sadly. This is actually their half-brother, and that's their mother. My children always complain that the dogs are always underfoot, which they are. There are too many of them, but I love them dearly. And so this room was a little office that you entered off the living room when I first bought this house, and I really wanted a room for just the dogs. So this is the doggy room. It's filled with their beds. None of the crates have doors on them, but they sleep in them anyway, and they're, they're ribbons from dog shows. I, I'm not showing them anymore. And it's where they like to hang out, and when they're underfoot, I put them all in here, and they're perfectly happy. And so it's, you know, they have, curtains, which were old curtains that I had because at night I have to cover the window because otherwise it's like watching TV and they, for them and they see deer and fox and coyote and start barking all night long. So I replaced the floor and I painted it. But I'm not one of those fancy kitchen people. <laughs> and I just painted the walls pink because I had extra pink paint. You can see the puppies are all just really waking up to life. They're trying to bite each other, and they haven't figured out to bite each other's tails yet, but they're, they figured out ears and necks. And I think he's just dying to play with them, but you can see he's like baby Huey. He's too big, and he would really hurt them. But you can see they're, you know, they're starting to rough house. And I actually had this in my old house too. This is a stark carpet and with six dogs, it's the only thing that doesn't show every spot because it's spotted, so it works. <laughs> so you want to come upstairs um, and I'll show you my room. 
So this is the second floor landing. Um, and this is my grandmother and her two sisters, Anne, Isabel, and Mary. Mary was this one, who's my grandmother. Um, I love this portrait. It's kind of perfect because I have three children. Um, but this is, these horse paintings are um, paintings of Roderick William Cameron, who was my great, great, great grandfather, who lived in, on a farm called Clifton Burley, and, which was actually underneath the Veronzano Bridge. And he bred racehorses and his horse Aristides was actually the first winner of the Kentucky Derby, of the first Kentucky Derby. Um, but I love these paintings because they've got all of his initials on the, on the buckets and the bl horse blankets. So I just think they're kind of wonderful. I don't, it, unfortunately, I don't know which horse is which, but my towel collection, which has got to be at least 30 years old of all my different Porto towels, which I love. That's my big extravagance in life, that and dog food. <laughs> And this is my bedroom, which is slightly askew at the moment because the puppies sleep in here me, with me um, for the first three weeks of their life. So they've just moved downstairs. I still keep them up here at night in their whelping box. But um, again, this room just has funny little things in it, you know, things that I've collected. And I mean, Mrs. Parrish gave me this, and Albert Hadley gave me this bookcase, which I love, looking like curtains. and. This is, uh, I played with this little girl. It's um, from Queen Elizabeth's coronation in what, 1952, and all of the horses and the beef eaters. And I, I love anything to do with the royal family. So I have an, a collection of cups and that I've had that, you know, started with her coronation probably from my grandmother that she gave me, but I just, anything to do with all these cups I love. And these are little watercolors done by Albert for me, that he gave me for my birthday. Um, this is a little sketch of, of the window at Bergdorf Goodman's, which I did with him. I don't remember what year, um, but I've always loved that little sketch and that little drawing of my mother. And then these are drawings by Mita Corsini Bland. Um, for a book that I worked on called Sister Parish Design, and a little mouse my mother gave me with, and these are lamps from Christopher Spitzmiller. And it's all just a mig mishmash. My daughter brought me back this quilt from India. This is a leftover fabric from when Parish Hadley was thinking about doing something with um, quadrille, but the little, this little sofa Albert gave me, this bed belonged to Gertrude Vanderbilt Whitney, and I, for some reason, no one in the family wanted it, so I got it. Um, and these are little drawings by Albert, a, a room, someone's living room we did in New York, and two little drawings of a topiary and a flower arrangement. And I saw that lion up in Kent, Connecticut at RT Facts and loved it. Um, this was Sailor's Valentine, came from my grandparents' house in Maine. Um, and I, I must say, I'm kind of disappointed to know, someone told me recently that these Sailor's Valentines were not always made by the sailors, but in fact, they, they bought them in, in ports in, during the war. Um, I like the idea that they made them for their sweethearts. Oh, my favorite thing in this room, actually, is this ruler, which lists all the kings of England down to Queen Elizabeth. There must be a fox outside. Um, but isn't it wonderful? British history rulers. And oh, you can measure on the other side. It's not the best. <laughs> what does home mean to me? Everything. I'm a homebody. I'm not a social butterfly by any means. So for me, there's great solace to be found at home and not with my things, but just surrounded by the, the comfort of, of 
pretty things. I think, um, I, I just don't think that, I, I can't imagine living in an ugly space. It's just never been what I've been about and what I would want to do. I just, I need, I need to wake up and feel inspired by something pretty in the room, be it a, you know, jar on a table or a painting on the wall or just a color that catches my eye. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Sue. This is our home here in Connecticut. I'm excited to show you around. Come on in. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, my name is Sue DeChiara. This is our dog, Cosmo, and we're in New Canaan, Connecticut. Cosmo is absolutely a member of this family. He, you could say, sometimes rules the house. He's a Havanese, and he's about seven years old. I have to remind myself he's seven years old because he really has the energy of a new puppy. We first moved to this house about it's almost nine years now. We were living not too far away, but in New York, which is only like eight miles away from here um, for a very long time. But my kids were going to school here in Connecticut. My husband works here in Connecticut. So we had been looking for a really, really long time for a home in Connecticut to move to. And when we found this house, we absolutely fell in love with it for a number of reasons. Um, the brick, the layout, and I was just able to envision my furniture moving in here perfectly. So we moved here, like I said, about nine years ago. And when we first moved in, I had all three of my kids here. And now, nine years later, my oldest is 23 and she lives not too far away in the city. And my middle is away at college. She just left for her senior year. And my youngest is now a senior in high school. This is definitely a colonial, center hall colonial. I think it's called post-Georgian style home. I might be getting too fancy for myself here, but it's definitely a center hall colonial, which is a very typical style for homes here in New England, meaning really that it just has a center hall down the upstairs, which the bedrooms are all located off of. Welcome to our front entrance. Our front entrance looks a lot like the front entrance in our old home because I really loved how that came out. So I pretty much almost duplicated it exactly with the same type of stripe wallpaper and furniture, but we took this large chandelier from our old home. That's a John Rosselli wrought iron light fixture that I absolutely love. So I was thrilled that it worked here because we really needed a super large fixture to sort of fill the space. And right when you walk in the door, I hit you with some of my favorite things that I own which are the three silhouettes of my children from when they were much younger. These are done by a New York City artist, Carter Custera. I hope I'm saying his name right. I first discovered his work in the dressing room of Barney's New York, RIP Barney's New York, but um, I guess he was friends with the people at Barney's and he had done silhouettes of the salespeople that worked at Barney's at the time all over the walls of the dressing rooms. And then I saw his work again after loving it there at Jonathan Adler. And I was thrilled to see that you could commission him to do portraits for your own pets or yourself or your children. And so I got in touch with him and the process was a lot of fun. He just had me take photos of each child. You come up with a fun little expression that sort of personifies who they are. And then he has you choose any Benjamin Moore, Benjamin Moore color under the sun. And that was an awful lot of choices. So I had these three little books in the front entry at the time. And I thought they were kind of 
a nice little fun pop of color. And I took these books to the paint store, matched them to Benjamin Moore colors, and that's how I came up with the three colors to use for the kids. I love this tiny little painting. I don't really remember where I got it. It might have been from Etsy. But what I love about it is the home we used to live in in Westchester was a white colonial with black shutters and we had a red front door. And so that reminds me of that house, which I loved. In our front entry, in addition to showcasing what I said was some of my favorite art in the house, I also have a lot of animal prints. I love animal prints. I think I'm even, I'm wearing a leopard print, the zebra print here sort of an antelope print here. Um, and I also am drawn to stars and star motifs. Um, and they're subtle, but they're, they're around too. So you can see there's like an inlaid star over here on this piece of furniture. There's stars over here. Once you start to look for them, there's stars here as well. I was a real estate attorney. And then we moved up here to the suburbs, which is almost the country, because it's pretty rural up here. Um, and I raised my kids, and I didn't work as an attorney anymore, and I got really into home decor as a hobby. And around 2009, I started getting really into home decor blogs, and I thought it would be fun to start one of my own which I did, and about 13 years later, I'm still blogging about home decor. I absolutely love it. And it's opened up so many wonderful doors for me, and it even gave me, long story short, um, the courage, for lack of a better word, to pursue a career as an artist, which is what I do now, I'm an abstract artist. I was a fine art minor in college, so I, actually kind of came back to my roots after all this time. The artist thing was always sort of bubbling under the surface. I never really let go of that thought. I would take art classes here and there. I took them in the city at the 92nd Street Y for a bit. Um, and so it was just sort of percolating under the surface for a while. So this is our living room. It's our formal living room and it probably gets the least use out of all the rooms in the house. I mean, I love to look at it, it's so pretty, but I'd be lying if I said we hung out in here a lot. But I do have a lot of my favorite things in here, um, starting with one of my own original art pieces over here above the fireplace. And as you can see, I'm using some soft blues here and some neutral tones. And like I said earlier, I always like to incorporate blue and blue and white wherever I can. The ceiling in here, I don't know if you can pick it up, but is actually not white. It's a very pale shade of blue. And that's something we learned about um, years ago. We took a trip down to New Orleans during Mardi Gras and we did a tour. I think it was the Garden District. And that's when I learned about the Southern tradition of haint blue and how it's, hopefully I'm not getting this wrong, how it's supposed to keep evil spirits away if you paint the ceiling blue and they traditionally do it on their, porch, on their front porches. And I was so charmed by the idea of doing ceilings in a very pale shade of blue that I hung on to that idea. And I have a, blue, a few blue ceilings throughout the house. It's subtle, but it's there and it's blue. And then we also have more blue and white, which I love these pieces. Um, again, there's some stars here. There's more stars on the mirror. I love mirrors too. There's a lot of mirrors in the house, just like how they bounce the light around. I also love candles. What's fun about these tables, uh, years ago when we first started getting pieces for our home, um, we were much, much younger. And we thought our style was a lot more formal than it really was. I don't know, we were almost like, too young to be setting up a house. And we had these very formal demi loons. They were kind of beige with like gold um, touches. And I don't know, they just looked very formal, very Versailles, which isn't really our style. So years later, we got the great idea from a designer I was working with to have them painted. Um, and it really, I think, makes them so much fresher 
and more modern. And I just love how it came out with the high gloss gray paint on it. This piece over here is by Matthew Heller. It's actually the lyrics, as you can see, to Blackbird, a John Lennon song that my husband and I both love. And, you know, it looks like poetry, but it's also, most people know the Blackbird song. So it's very special. These are actually faux flowers. They're silk flowers from a company here in Connecticut, Diane James Home. I know the owners. I actually met them, uh, two twins, their sisters, and they run the company for their mom. And they're now friends of mine that I met from first starting that home decor blog back in 2009. From here, I'll take you to our dining room, which is just on the other side of our entryway. This, I love this room. Um, I love the wallpaper we have here. It's Susan Harder um, painted wallpaper. And I just think it's so soothing and so pretty and it references, you know, the rural landscape that we live in and the soft colors I think are so pretty. I didn't want to hang too much on the walls here because I didn't want to take away from the, you know, just how pretty this all looks. These mirrors were a fun idea. They kind of remind me of like champagne bubbles. They seem very effervescent to me. I was struggling for the longest time uh, what to hang on this wall. I wanted to cover it up. I didn't want to cover it up. It looked a little too sterile without something there. I tried so many things. I put furniture in front of it. And then I saw in a magazine, I forget the name of the designer, but he had mural wallpaper in a dining room and he had done something very similar with a lot of federal style round mirrors. So um, I leaned on Fiona Leonard. She's a designer here in Darien, um, next town over. And I got her opinion. I was like, is this something we should be doing here? Do you think it will work? Because, you know, I'd be putting nails through uh, the wallpaper. So either it's going to look right and you're going to nail it or it's going to ruin the wallpaper. So she encouraged me to go for it and I ordered the mirrors. They're actually from Valor Design. They're not expensive at all. And um, I was still panicked the day we came to hang these up. And I got the bright idea to take paper plates <laughs> and use painter's tape. And I put the plates on the wall where I thought the mirror should go because I was still like, oh, if I hate it, that's it. They've got to stay there. I'll have punctured this beautiful wallpaper. So we put the paper plates up on the wall and then I got really excited because I was able to envision it. I'm a visual person. I needed to get a sense of it. Once I saw the paper plates on the wall, it was a go and I absolutely love how it came out. We have um, mostly holidays are all in here. Uh, once in a while, we'll have a dinner party. We're having friends over for dinner, actually this Friday night. Um, I thought about maybe setting it up ahead of time. I just didn't get to it. I thought I'd make it all pretty, but um, it's only Wednesday and they're not coming till Friday. Uh, we are entertaining then. And so we do Christmas, we do Thanksgiving, we do Hanukkah, we celebrate everything, the major holidays. We do it all in here, and every once in a while we'll have a dinner party in here as well. But we don't typically eat our meals in here as a family. We're pretty informal people. Over here by the fireplace, guess what? More stars. Um, so like I said, I'm just, I'm not trying to put stars everywhere, but I am drawn to them. And at some point I just sort of realized that we have a lot of stars in our house. So like most of the furniture, in this house, uh, it's from our old home back in Westchester. But one thing I didn't um, take with me was the chandelier from our old home. I wanted to go something a little bit more glam, a little bit more modern. And I'm a big fan of the Aaron Lauder line of lighting. And when I saw this fixture, I knew it was the perfect opportunity to put it in here. It's a great mix of glam modern and traditional, and I really think it just suits this room so nicely. 
So right off the dining room, we have our butler's pantry, which is another one of my favorite spots in the house. When people come inside my home, I want them to feel mostly at ease. I don't want them to feel like this is a very stuffy place that you can't just, you know, relax. I want them to feel comfortable and I want them to get a sense of who we are as a family. I like to have a lot of personal mementos and heirlooms around us. So welcome to our butler's pantry. This is one of my favorite little rooms in the house. Um, when we first came to see the house, when we first bought the house, it was all dark, sort of like stained dark cherry wood. And it had a very heavy masculine feel to it. And as soon as I saw this space, I knew that I was gonna paint all the wood, um, paint over the wood. I know some people don't agree with that, but, it was absolutely my dream to do this high gloss blue pantry in here. And I absolutely love how it came out. And then again, we have a pale blue ceiling up here. We kept the original black granite. We kept the original sink, the original faucet. Really all we did was paint and change the hardware in this room. And it really came together so beautifully. I was a little worried it was going to be too dark, but I think the fact that it's so high gloss lacquered walls like this bounces the light around a lot. So that sort of saved it. And I think because it's a small space, but there is the lighting and the windows and the glass and a lot of reflective areas, I feel like it is like a little jewel box. So I really love that aspect of it. So it really works being dark in this small space. So in here, I have uh, a lot of our china. It's our wedding china, which is Lennox, just a very basic Lennox china with a gold rim. And then later on, I started to collect these heron pieces, which you can see behind these fun little I guess they're artichokes, I'm not really sure. But these, I'm sure this pattern has a name, I'm not great with that, but it is heron, and I absolutely love this pattern. And I have a sugar bowl with the same pattern, which is just so pretty that my parents gave us for our one year anniversary back when we were newlyweds. And then my friend had an artist paint a little picture. This isn't Heron, but she had hired this artist to hand paint this little picture to match it. And you would think it is. I mean, it looks pretty good to me. I would say my style is very traditional, but I like to think I add enough modern flourishes to give it more of an eclectic, refreshed, newer traditional type of feel. Okay, so here we are in the kitchen. And unlike our living room, which gets the least bit of use, the kitchen, like most people's homes, is absolutely the most popular room in the house. It definitely gets the most use. It's where everybody congregates, whether it's around this center island, which when we entertain, we tend to mostly put out a very informal buffet. And we'll usually have people come in from the dining room with their plates, and go along the buffet. It also works if we're entertaining outside over here. People can come in and we use this as a buffet bar almost all the time. And then my son often eats breakfast at the counter. And we also have this breakfast area over here where we'll eat as well. Sometimes we'll entertain here as well. Sometimes if we're having a lot of family here, this becomes the kitty table and the dining room's just over there. And over here in this hutch, I have more blue and white pieces. Um, back when we first moved in here, in the old home, I should start there, I had a lot of blue and white pieces. Most of these are from our old home, but they weren't really collected together like this in a grouping. I had white pitchers and a lot of ironstone pottery in a similar type of hutch, but the hutch was blue gray in our old kitchen. And so the white pottery really stood out against the blue cabinetry. When we moved here, the white against the white 
really looked sterile and cold. And I got the idea to just grab all of my blue and white pieces and put them in here and showcase them in here. And then I just added these little two boxes on top. I got them from Amazon, not expensive at all. And it just sort of finished off this whole vignette really nicely. This house has a lot of fun little details. And one of my favorites is how the spice rack kind of just comes out from the molding over here. Um, I think that's a cool little detail. And it does the same thing on the other side. So your spices are really close to the stove. When we first came to look at the house, the kitchen, the layout was exactly what you're seeing now. But we just changed, like we did in the butler's pantry, we just changed the surface. Um, this, like the butler's pantry, was kind of dark and heavier, had a masculine feel to it, wasn't really um, my style, our style. I love a white kitchen. Even if it's no longer trending, I will always love a white kitchen. It just reads very classic and clean to me. So I knew we were going to paint over the cabinets and paint them white. And we ended up replacing the refrigerators. There were two refrigerators here. Everything was laid out exactly like this. I can't take credit for the layout at all. And I really think it works nicely. And um, we got rid of a lot of the extraneous molding and sort of just pared it down and simplified it. We redid the countertops. I think they were like a beige granite. And uh, the counters were sort of like a beigey vanilla. And we resurfaced and put in new countertops. This is marble. And I know a lot of people get squeamish when it comes to marble. And you have to be willing to live with the dings and the stains and the etching. And don't look close enough because there's a lot of that going on here. But I love the look of the marble. And I am willing just to work with that. And over here along the edge, it looks like we have such a thick slab of marble. But that would have actually been a fortune. And so a great little trick is to do what they call mitering. And so they take a thinner slab of marble and they work with it this way. And they'll put another slab this way and they'll seal it together to create that nice, thick, substantial, chunky look of marble without the same cost. So more blue and white pottery. The hydrangeas. Hydrangeas are absolutely some of my favorite flowers. And you are seeing the best of them right now. These are right from my own garden, right outside. I love hydrangeas. I try to keep them here fresh for as long as I can. And then sometimes even when they dry out, I'll keep them here as well. And then in the winter months, I usually have um, just greenery here, like Israeli ruckus, I think it's called. And that just stays green in water um, for a really, really long time. It's a great little hack. You can even order it on Amazon, but it's, it's a fresh, um, stem. It's just not a flower. and It looks really, really pretty. And um, getting back to the marble and the wear and tear it takes, when we first got marble counters in our old home, I was panicked and I got this big, thick butcher block and I figured, okay, anything we have to do, any meats, any, any red wine, any sauces, we're just going to do on here. Um, which was completely unrealistic. And over time, I just learned to live with the dings and the stains, like I said. And this just became purely decorative. And I'm always fussing and messing around with what's up here. I love candles. And I just like to showcase cute little things. And I love how the butcher block um, adds some warmth to this white kitchen along with the brass hardware and the wood tones of the counter stools, it really helps to warm the space up. I have a lot of favorite candle scents. Uh, right now, um, as we head into fall, I'm really favoring this very musky Santal. It's one of my favorite scents, not just for candles, but for hand soap, uh, cologne, you name it. I'm into this scent, it's great. And so one of the nicest parts of, about our kitchen is all the natural light that floods in. We have these sliding French doors here. We have another set of French doors over here, the windows over here. And it heads, like I said, right out to our back patio. So welcome to our back patio. You're seeing the back of our house at the best time of year when it's really looking its sharpest with the pool open and the flowers all in bloom. 
And I just love the look of green and white. I think it looks so pretty. And I like to keep it simple with just one color pattern, the green, the white, and we continued it out along the side of the pool. And then all the hydrangeas are along the house this way. We like to really push it with how much time we can spend out here. Um, we have a fire pit over here and the pool has a little hot tub part to it. So we'll really stretch it right into mid fall. Um, and then it becomes a little crazy and it gets too cold and we have to close the pool. Um, but we like to open it fairly early in the season. By the last week in April, we're, we're probably itching to open the pool just because even if we're not using it, it just looks so much nicer when we have the pool open versus when it's all closed up. As far as my art goes, I'm inspired mostly by the colors um, that I'm drawn to. A lot of neutrals, a lot of soft blues, uh, sort of like the coastal area of Connecticut if you were to break it down into an abstract. A lot of beiges, a lot of white, like I said, a lot of different tones of blue. I'm inspired by nature. I'm inspired by other artists. I like to see what they're doing. There's so many talented artists in this area alone that it's very inspiring. Right off the kitchen, we have our family room, our TV room. And like the kitchen, this is really where we spend 90% of our time is in this room right here. We've got the TV in here, which is one of the reasons why we're spending time in here. Proximity to the kitchen is so nice. It's really the central room of the house. As you can see, you can almost see all the other rooms on the first floor from this spot. The butterflies are a fun thing. Um, again, like the stars, it was just sort of evolved over time. Um, when I had my first child, I got one of these little Baccarat butterflies as a gift, a uh, little pink butterfly. And I thought it was so charming um, that when I had my next daughter, I bought one for myself. And then when I had my son, obviously I bought a blue one. I had these before we moved to this house and I just thought it would look so cute if I displayed them on the fireplace when we moved here. And then when we moved here, I had these big walls I needed to get some art for. And I, I had seen these butterflies before. They're by a company called Natural Curiosities. They make really fun, really beautiful wall art. And I love how they frame them in these acrylic frames, acrylic boxes. And I immediately thought of these butterflies because they've got the pink and they've got the blue and they're rather large. And I think they work perfectly in here and they add a nice fun pop of color as well. So one thing I learned from working with professional designers through the years and just penning my blog all about interior design for so many years is you definitely don't want to push your furniture up against the wall, even though that's very tempting. You think, oh, it's a big space. I want to maximize the space. I want to use all the room, but that's not always the best way to go. Um, so as you can see, we're sort of floating the couch off the wall. And this couch is not on the wall. Very few pieces are actually against the wall. And I really think it helps to center the room, bring it all together, makes it feel a lot cozier and just gives it a very polished look. On the couches in here, again, we've got blue and white happening in here. We've got a bunch of fun patterns with blue and white in here. And I think the way this all seems to work together is that we're sticking to the blue and we're not working with too many other colors because I think it would be pretty chaotic if we introduced a bunch of other colors into the pattern. But if you stick with the same blue tones, I think you can get away with using a bunch of fun different patterns. Uh, the pillows here are from a company called Quadrille and I absolutely love, I mean, almost every fabric this company puts out. I think they're so fun. They use um, great colors, they have great motifs and I just love the fabrics. Over here on the coffee table, um, I didn't want to put too many things on the coffee table in here because like I said, we're in here a lot. We've got our feet up usually on the table, watching TV, you don't want it to obstruct the view. 
but I didn't want to have nothing either. Um, so I have a tray here, which sort of helps to just organize and corral everything together, all the remotes and everything. Instead of having it just look messy, they go in here. Another candle, more animal print with the little cute little ceramic zebras I have over here. They reference the zebra when you walk in the front door. More zebra pattern over here on the little footstools by the fireplace. These were just a fun little find I uh, found on Etsy. Um, and these are just fun wooden beads I found at a garden store. I just thought they looked really pretty in the bowl. The thing I love most about this home is the layout. I think it's very elegant, very gracious. The rooms flow together beautifully. And I've actually thought about it because sometimes I think it would be a dream to build our own home. Um, could be a nightmare too. And I really think the way this home was laid out, I don't know that I would change a lot about it. I think it just makes sense. Um, it has everything we need and I'm really grateful for that. And then just off the kitchen over here on the other side, we have our mudroom entrance, which is the entrance that we use the most um, if we're coming in from the side or if we're coming in our garage is just off of here. And when you're living in New England, you definitely need some sort of a mudroom because the weather is just all over the place. So as you can see, we've got our coats and our shoes, and it looks like I live with an entire baseball team, but this is just a small sample of my son's and my husband's baseball hats. And I actually tidied it up before you guys came, so it's pretty neat right now. Uh, a fun thing in this room, we used to own a boat and here in Connecticut, it's a coastal state. And the hooks in this room are actually boat cleats. And there's some shiplap too, which has a nice nautical feel to it. So the runner in here is Stark. I think I'm pronouncing it right. I think it's antelope or antelopa carpet. I absolutely love this pattern. We had it in our old home, so I knew for sure I'd be repeating it in this home. And it's great for a number of reasons. I think it's beautiful, but for a mudroom, it's great at hiding a lot of dirt because of the speckly brown pattern. And then over here on the ceiling, I love to draw attention to the ceilings. If they're not painted blue, quite often you'll find wallpaper up on my ceilings. And this is a really pretty, I think it's a Ralph Lauren grass cloth that we went with here on the ceiling. Another kind of crazy thing about this house is that it has not just an elevator, but a glass elevator, um, which is kind of nuts. We didn't build this house. We did put the elevator in, it came with the house. Um, but now that we have it, it's certainly a very fun and nice thing to have. My mom is 90, and when she comes to visit, our guest room is upstairs, so she will actually use the elevator and take it to get her to the second floor. It also goes down to our basement, so if we have to move around heavy luggage or heavy pieces and we want to put them in the basement, it's really kind of nice to have a glass elevator to use. And if you want, I can, I can show it to you. Cosmo oddly loves the elevator. <laughs> And here it is. Um, I've actually thought about wallpapering this elevator. My husband thinks I'm nuts, but I think it would be a fun thing to do. And right off the mudroom back entrance area, we have the blue and white bathroom. Again, blue and white. I absolutely love the um, wallpaper here, which is quadrille again. It's another quadrille print. I believe it's called Sigourney. And I fell in love with this print years and years ago. So I was really excited to get to use it when we moved to this house. I knew immediately it was gonna go in this bathroom. Again, the original bathroom was very dark, a lot of browns, a lot of beiges. And we just replaced the countertop and painted this white, changed the hardware and changed the floors. We've got penny tile on the floors in here, which I think are so fun and they're not expensive at all. And then this is a full bath actually. I think um, 
the builder's idea was that it would be right off the pool because the pool's right back there. So he put a rather large shower into this bathroom as well. And we just continued with the penny tile theme all the way through. And I think it looks so fun and so modern with all this penny tile on the walls. So I have a little bit of pink in this room as well, more hydrangeas, more blue and white, a little bit of pink. And I just thought it looked so good in the family room with the pink butterflies against a similar shade of blue that I wanted to introduce just a little bit of pink into this room just to mix it up as well. Not too much, just a little pop. And then in this room, again, because it's off the pool, I have my son's baby um, swim trunks here, which I had professionally framed. Back when I first had my son, uh, several of my girlfriends chipped in and they bought um, both these sets of bathing suits with matching ones for my husband, um, which I just thought was the cutest thing. And um, when he outgrew them, I saved them because I'm very sentimental like that and had them framed. And I think they look adorable in here. And it's just funny because now the little boy um, who would wear these is now almost six feet tall. And I think he's almost, he's probably too big to even fit into um, the dad version of this bathing suit now. Okay, so right off the front entry, as you can see, we've got our front staircase. And uh, why don't we head upstairs? So right off the center bedroom hallway area, we have this nice landing space. I don't really know what to call this space, but um, we had plenty of living room furniture from our old home and it just seemed to work so nicely in here that we just set it up like another living room up here. And I've got more of my original artwork over here on the wall. Cosmo has a little bed up in here. We've got these fun um, pieces over here which reference um, my parents are both native New Yorkers. Um, my in-laws are native New Yorkers. We're all originally from New York. So that's a little throwback to our status as New Yorkers at heart. And um, believe it or not, I actually do use this room more than the downstairs living room. Sometimes I'll come in here just to read or hang out and um, do my thing up here. And um, my grandmother didn't start painting um, until much later in life. She sort of picked it up in her um, senior years and she's self-taught and I love these. All my cousins, my brother, we all have, she was prolific and we all have many, many, many of her pieces. Um, I've got more throughout my house, but I just put a bunch of them all together here. These are some of my favorites. Um, actually, this one, my oldest daughter did. I love this. She did this when she was in grade school and I was so blown away by it that I had it professionally framed. And just like the bathing suits in the bathroom, as you can see, I really like to frame personal items. This dress um, my mother wore when she immigrated here from Germany. They had escaped, um, well not escaped, but they left Nazi occupied um, Germany with her two older sisters and my grandparents. Um, they came across, they came through Ellis Island. It's a real you know, immigrant story. This was the dress she was wearing in her passport photo. I have the photo hanging on the wall over there. And um, my grandmother, who I never met, she actually made her that dress. Um, so it's, it's so special, I can't believe we still have it. It's so great. And if you want to see my mom wearing the dress, here she is. Here's my mom wearing the dress in her passport photo um, when she came over as a very young child from Nazi-occupied Germany. Before I take you into our primary bedroom, I just wanted to show you our laundry room. It's upstairs, not too far, and I just think it's so fun. I did this room myself and um, I had a lot of fun doing it. Very similar theme. I only changed the countertops, painted it white, changed the hardware, and I went with this really fun, um, crazy wallpaper 
just want it to be like a fun and interesting place. Um, you got to spend time in here. It's a nice size to spend time in. Why not make it pretty? And um, I was working, you know, with these crazy wall uh, ceiling slants. And I just think uh, this wallpaper really lends itself to how crazy this slanting wallpaper, slanting ceilings are. And I just think it came out really fun. And um, I also love that it's upstairs. Our old laundry room was downstairs. And if you think about it, most of the things you're gonna wash are upstairs, your bedding, your towels, your clothes. So to me, it makes a lot more sense to have the laundry room upstairs. So that's really nice. So this is our primary bedroom. And again, I went with blue. This is a high gloss blue here on the ceilings and then it's a matte blue very very subtle on the ceilings in here and we have grass cloth wallpaper on the walls which I really love to use in a bedroom because I just feel like it makes it feel very cozy and snug to have that on the walls okay so again I've got more of the blue and white jars happening in here as soon as we moved in, I just knew they were gonna work perfectly. I already had them, I just plopped them down and they worked so nice. And then I got this selenite centerpiece that actually has votives inside, which I think looks so pretty in there. And we had only needed to change the surround. I think it was a very dark surround if I'm remembering it correctly. And we lightened it up by changing it to the marble that you see now. Right off this area, which is a very charming vestibule when you enter our primary bedroom. Um, it's so fun because it, it's like a suite. I mean, it's huge. It's bigger than our first apartment. And when we first came to look at the house, I thought this was a little weird and a little clumsy. There's sort of this bonus area off um, the bedroom. And when we first came to look at it, this bookcase wasn't here. It was just sort of like a little nook in the wall. So kind of a quirky fun thing in here is a few of the books um, have wallpaper on them from my bedroom, from my childhood. Um, and this is like the most 70s wallpaper that ever wallpapered, I think. Um, and I lived with this chaotic wallpaper and I loved it. Uh, so you could say I always love wallpaper and these were on the books in my bedroom growing up because we went to a very fancy home decor boutique and I saw that they had used wallpaper as book covers and I just thought that was like the coolest thing and I had my mom cover some of my books as a child. Even then I was pretty interested in this stuff um, and those are just some of the original books covered in the original wallpaper from my childhood. I have um, on this bookcase, this is a piece of mine that I did. It's a small piece. It's one of my favorites. Again, you can tell I like blue and white. I mean, I'm consistent if nothing else. And then over here, I have another blue and white abstract piece of mine behind this fun brass statue. They sort of go together, I think. And as you can see, there's no windows in here. And when we came to look at it, I was like, what is this dark little room with no windows? But then we came back and looked at the house again. And I figured, you know what? This little nook is going to lend itself perfectly to a built-in bookcase. And I really was able to envision it as just a cozy little spot to read or watch TV or just hang out. And that's exactly how it turned out. And we put the mirror there to reflect the light. And I, I love this little space, especially during COVID. It was a great little place to um, run away and hide in. And then right off the little bonus area, I've got my little vanity area, little dressing room. Both of our closets are off of here. And when we bought the house, this was set up a lot differently. It was, it was a sink and like a wet bar and a refrigerator. And I think the idea was it to be like a hotel, maybe like a coffee bar. But I knew I was never going to use it that way. Um, I don't know. It just didn't make sense for me to have a refrigerator running in our bedroom. <laughs> and I really wanted a place to just be able to get dressed, do my hair, do my makeup. Um, 
and it gave me an excuse to use this really fun quadrille wallpaper that I have always loved. And I went with the matching valance over here. And I just love this little space. And then over here is more of my grandmother's artwork. These are two of my favorite pieces. These are a little different um, than what she used to paint traditionally, and they're really of her time. Um, the style, I, I just think they're so charming, and even the way they're framed, I just love these. I didn't frame them, they came to me that way. I think they're so sweet. So we have a finished attic, so we have a third floor, and we continued the same antelope runner, because I really love this pattern. And again, with the high gloss, everything continues up the same up to the third floor. And that's where my art studio is, if you want to come up and take a look. So this is our attic. It's a finished attic, as you can see. And guess what? Blue and white is happening on this floor, too. This is such a fun print. And I wanted to use it somewhere, so I went with this little vestibule. And the room that originally started out as a teenage hangout room, um, but I sort of took over half of it as my art studio. So now I share this space with my teenage son, um, but not at the same time. Usually when he's at school, I'll paint. And then when he comes home from school and he needs to do his homework or he wants to be with his friends or gaming, it all happens up here. Um, so we've just made peace with it. This side of the room is mine and that side of the room is his. Uh, one of the reasons why I chose to come up here and set up my studio up here, um, the room gets a lot of natural light. And this little nook was already here. We didn't put it here. It was kind of set up like a little stage. And so when I first started painting again, I unrealistically thought I could just contain myself to this tiny little um, nook up in here and I would just keep my paints here and I thought I'd have an easel here and I would just paint next to the window. Um, didn't take me much time to just sort of spill out with everything and just kind of take over more and more real estate in this room as the years went on and I've just expanded. I love to use mostly acrylic paints. Um, I took a few art courses a few years ago at, um, there's a great art school here in New Canaan called Silvermine. And um, I learned so many great new techniques where I was only using brushes beforehand. And they got me using all kinds of fun tools like rollers and scrapers, um, which are great um, to use in conjunction with acrylic paint because it's so malleable. And there's a lot of wooden canvases here because I love to paint on wood because I tend to use a lot of layers. And if you're scraping out a lot of layers, um, sometimes a canvas can't always take the wear and tear that I put into the paintings. So it's nice to have a wood surface to work on. So this little rocking chair over here is one of the few things I actually have um, from my childhood home growing up. It's an original Eames mid-century rocking chair. And uh, we even have a few pictures of my mom holding me as a baby and rocking me in this chair. So I think it's so special for that reason. To me, the word home means a safe place. It's your sanctuary where you can kick back and just relax and be your most authentic self. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Mar, and welcome to Roseburg Gardens, located in Westport, Connecticut. Come on inside. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, I'm Mar Jennings. We're at Roseburg Gardens, my home, and we're in Westport, Connecticut. I build a brand on casual luxury, and I make sure that I live and breathe my brand in everything that I do. Mother Nature is truly my biggest inspiration, as well as something old becoming something new. That eclectic magic of the mix is truly what makes a successful, happy home. 
My journey to this point has been quite a uh, quilt. I started off as a professional figure skater. I won regionals and sectionals in 1992 and 1993. A couple years ago, I came back to win the world senior men's category, which I was thrilled to be able to lace up and come back to the ice. But really, I went from being a skater to a banker, a senior vice president running the entire state of Connecticut. I heard over and over again that I was the most creative banker uh, people ever met. And so it really got me to think about what really makes my heart tick. And then I started the migration of trying to put it to paper. So I wrote a book, Life on Mars, A Four Season Garden, that documented the evolution of my Westport home here. And then I followed up with a Life on Mars, uh, Creating Casual Luxury, the interior design philosophy. And along the way, I've had television shows. I'm also a licensed real estate agent with a very robust team. And the best part about what I do and how I got here is that I'm able to focus on the past, learn from what I did, and apply those same disciplines and principles to my day-to-day -day life in a corporate environment, whether it be selling real estate or in the design environment. My home is about 2,000 square feet. It's truly what I have underscored as casual luxury. It's an eclectic collection of the things that I've loved, that I have found. I do not discriminate when I shop. I can shop in a big box store or I can shop in an antique center and everything in between. I always seek uh, really quality and color tones and mother nature inspired. And I think when you come into my home, the first thing that really greets you is the fact that it's very, very open. There's a lot of natural light because I believe and I've always uh, felt strongly about infusing and blurring the lines between indoor design and mother nature and bringing those elements into my space by either doing something very organic, a terrarium, or color tones and textures. So welcome to my foyer. The key part of my foyer is this fantastic Dutch door inspired by Grey Gardens. I'm obsessed. Liz Lang, wherever you are, that Dutch door was my inspiration and it's very functional as well. It's beautiful, but having two small dogs, whenever I have packages or Chinese food delivered, I can simply just open the top, take the packages and close it and I don't have to worry about the dogs running out. The one thing you'll notice throughout my house is there's great art. I'm all about landscape uh, paintings, so you'll find that on every floor. It is three floors, so the house is stacked. And as we flow into my living room, I'd like to introduce you to my two favorite girls. This is Daisy von Schnorkenheimer. She is five years old, and this is the newest one to the family. This is Clover von Schnorkenheimer, and she is six months. So let me tell you about these two girls. First of all, they cohabitate beautifully together. They are the ladies of the house. Daisy now is sharing the responsibility with Clover, but as you can see, they become very, very comfortable here at Roseburg Gardens. They have a nice yard. They have full access to all the bunnies. They are looking at them all the time, the squirrels. So this is really ideal for them because they are hunters, ratters. So for them to be able to see the rabbits and the squirrels, well, that just makes their day. That's better than uh, an Animal Planet TF television for sure. So my inspiration for this room was really to embrace all the elements of Mother Nature. And I do that by the wonderful paintings that I have. This is a lovely collection of some older pieces and a Dennis Sheen collection. This is actually called Brookside. It's one of his larger uh, paintings. But most importantly, in this room, I wanted to have a television, but I didn't want it to scream a television over a fireplace. So this is actually a television right behind the fireplace. Now, when I first bought the house, the fireplace was an insert. So I quickly wanted to identify that. Let's build an old fashioned fireplace. So I tore it off the side of the house and rebuilt it from the ground up. And by doing this, it gave me the opportunity to really build in the television and to make it a focal point 
without having it scream, there's a TV there. The best part about it is that the reflection works beautifully with the artwork. So unless I told you there was a TV back there, you wouldn't know it. Now, size and scale is a very big part of my overall design. I think it's so crucial to understand how your space is working, identify how you want it to work, and then find those key pieces. These are wonderful Mitchell Gold Bob William Sophia sofas, and they're just the perfect scale. I love the fact they have casters, and it is just a very comfortable love seat. And the fact that the fireplace is right in between, it really makes it for a wonderful conversation area. So I can very comfortably seat six people here between the two chairs and the two sofas. And then if I wanted to bring in more seating, well, I do have extra seating that I can pull in as well. So it makes it a fantastic place for conversation and socializing. The coffee table is what I always say, something old becoming something new. This came out of an old hotel in New York City. I loved it. It had some great patina and the bamboo, faux bamboo. And I just said, it's the size that I was looking for. And the moment I put it down, I knew it was perfect. The house is an open concept between the living room and the dining room. But one of the things that I'm most proud about was really removing all the doors and replacing them with the steel doors and creating a terrace right off the dining room area. Now, I do love to entertain. I'm not one for cooking, but I do love to entertain. And when I have intimate parties, I see here and when I have larger gatherings and the weather permits, I'm outside under the pergola. This offers the most beautiful views of the garden. I'm a big gardener, so that's an important aspect of my overall aesthetics is to really embrace Mother Nature but also be able to use the space outside. This is a wonderful moment that tells a story of a variety of different pieces and it's all curated based upon the things that I love, places that I've gone, some beautiful china. And when I look at this, I always say to myself, this is a little bit of who I am, a snapshot of my soul. Some of the key pieces here that really speak to me and have wonderful memories is certainly my china. Now I'm a widower and this was my wedding china. And for me, it's always proudly displayed to remind me of the past, but also to remind me to enjoy and to actually use those pieces. It's one thing to have them stored away, but it's most important to actually cherish those pieces and to get them out and to share them with others. So it reminds me each and every time uh, when I look at that. On a wonderful rendering of the house and the name because it's called Rosebrook Gardens and it's called Rosebrook Gardens because of the roses on the property and the brook at the very end of the street. Ironically enough, during my television show, when we filmed an entire makeover block, we actually named all the houses so they all have cute names as well. It's just part of our little street here. One thing that I also adore is when I am in this dining room, this is my favorite spot right here. And the reason why this is my favorite spot is because I could look out to the right where this terrace is now located. This was once a window that I removed and put the steel doors and created the patio. This patio is fantastic for first thing in the morning, coffee, read the paper, check your emails. This is where you want to sit. And when I dine, I sit here because I can look out to the terrace. But most importantly, I have a pretty moment that I look into the kitchen. Of course, my guests get to enjoy the visual beauty of the backyard, parterre garden, and outdoor living room space which will go there soon. But for now, let's go into the kitchen. The kitchen is one of the spaces that I say that it's really designed beautifully. Even though I'm not a cook, I wanted to make sure that the kitchen was functional and beautiful. And this kitchen once ended right here, and I was able to bump it out 
pick up all the storage underneath and create a nice sitting area for coffee when it's snowing outside. This is where you want to sit, have your coffee and read your paper. And I wanted to also have a moment of beauty. As I mentioned, I sit at the table and when I look over, I see my collection of Hermes China that I have been cultivating and tracking down every piece I possibly can find, which is impossible sometimes. I'm very frustrated. I go in and I can't find the pieces that I need. But when I do, I continue to add to the collection. So it's something new, something old. The Staffordshire dog is something that I've had for many, many years. And it's just a moment that takes me back in time. Of course, Iden Garden's uh, cookbooks are always on hand and just a really pretty curated collection here that is functional, decorative, and beautiful. My Ida Garden cookbooks are proudly displayed and of course, although I'm not a cook, I do love good food. So I will flip through the pages and I will say either a friend of mine or a gentleman that comes and cook for me, uh, can you make this? And uh, we always refer to those books. So some wonderful recipes in there. So as we go into the kitchen, which was renovated about four years ago, I was all about maximizing the space. So once again, where I picked up a little bit of safe space in the back, I wanted to do the same over the kitchen sink, just to give me that feel that was a little bit larger. The real treat in this kitchen for someone who doesn't cook is the La Cronue stove, of course. I wanted to have a featured stove even though I'm not a person that can really use it successfully, I at least have it for other people to enjoy. The hand-painted tile was really important for me. I wanted something that was a little bit unique and not a cookie cutter subway tile. I wanted to make the appliances disappear. So because it's just me, I didn't need an oversized refrigerator. So a smaller scale sub-zero was ideal. And then of course, doing the cabinetry a lighter color above and then a wonderful light gray below was a compliment and kind of being able to make the room feel bigger. I do that with my design principles. I take larger spaces and make them into, cut them into smaller spaces so they have different functionality in one room. And then I take one small space and I make it look bigger by cutting it up and giving different details that bring your eye to different places that give the illusion of a much bigger space. I also, very early on when I moved in this house, wanted to have the dark hardwood floors because I felt the dark hardwood floors would be a great contrast to the nine foot ceilings. And when I renovated this, I added the shiplap, changed all the lighting. I have a great resource uh, in Norwalk, Chloe Winston Lighting that has such a curated, beautiful eye of decorative lighting. I'm a big fan of visual comfort, so you'll see a lot of that in the house. I love most about my home is the fact that I've been here 26 years. I bought it from the builder and then finished it, and it's truly my nest. When I was looking for a primary residence, I knew I wasn't going to find the perfect home, but I know that I could make a home perfect by my creativity and the things that I love. That truly makes a house a home. And it's in the village of Westward downtown, so it's very convenient to walk into town. It's a little postage stamp of a property, but it is totally all about outdoor rooms, outdoor spaces. There's multiple places to go and I've had hundreds of people here at one time for different garden tours and they're always amazed that every detail has some kind of attention or deliberate design behind it and that to me really gets me up each and every day but most importantly my home is my brand and sharing it and have people become inspired by it is truly my purpose. From the kitchen, we're going to a small hall that leads you to the cloakroom. And a cloakroom is a British word for a half bath. This half bath is quite special. It's wallpapered with some Philip Jeffries wallpaper and it has heated floors. The dogs love that for sure. But it's a nice added moment when you come and you use this space. 
The vanity and the mirror are from Waterworks. It has a nice deep gray color and it's very clean, but it's also extremely soothing. I have some lovely artwork. This is uh, another contemporary artist with some wonderful lighting. It's all about lighting and every light in this house has a dimmer. So here's the outdoor living room space. This is such a wonderful oasis. I have a fire pit and I have two parterre gardens. The side parterre garden leads you to the side terrace, of course, that takes you to the front yard. But this is all about the height of the season and being able to enjoy this space with friends and family. The outdoor living room is truly a space to live in and it is year-round weatherproof furnishings and the idea is to really congregate out here with a wonderful fire in the fire pit. It's flanked by two parterre gardens and this is my boxwood parterre garden and what's nice about the parterre garden it creates some structure and some formality in the garden but yet it's still very casual as well. As I mentioned, I'm a gardener and I really enjoy playing in the dirt, but most importantly, I love my garden to be organized as well. I'm all about planters, boxwoods, and look at this window box, it's right off the kitchen. Again, a pop of color, interest. This is a high traffic walking area between the outdoor area where we dine and the garden studio this is quite a little bit of a movement so i wanted to have people pause and enjoy the garden and take in the beauty now i've been here for 26 years the wisterias are 25 years old and each and every year they bloom and they're prolific the key to the wisteria is to make sure you show them who's in charge and here's a perfect example this wisteria has been here 25 years and it's just growing and you constantly have to manipulate the growth and let it know which direction you want to take it. And in the spring when it blooms, it rewards you as a thank you and it has beautiful flowers that are just prolific. Uh, it, it's a nice added detail that's unexpected for sure. Let's take a look at the garden studio, which was once a one car garage. I did put my car in here one time, and then I realized that this driveway to the garage was not the best use of a small piece of property. So I started to chop it up and make some more outdoor rooms. The garden studio is an all purpose. It's a great place to work. It has internet, it has phone, it has a heated floor. It's a functional space that's very, very decorative. And above, there's also an office above as well. So just like the house, it's stacked. It was the biggest footprint I could put for the property. So instead of going out, it had to go up. But this is my happy place. It has a lot of storage. And as I mentioned, I can talk straight to the main house. I can also page, bring me a cup of coffee, whatever I need. I have full access to the rest of the house. This island is a rough Lauren piece that I picked up years ago in the Hamptons. It was mahogany, it was a very dark color, and I had it painted white, but it was only finished on one side, so I had my carpenter match it so I could have it open. So the drawers on this side, this was closed off, so I had it matched and built out, and this is where I can sit on my computer, I have the wonderful tray, so if I want to move things out quickly, it's all on a tray. I can look and watch over the garden. I could turn this into a bar for any cocktail parties or dinner parties that I have, or I can quickly escape to the garden this way. And when I first moved here, I had planted three trees, architectural trees and they grew up beautifully. But what I found as I spent more time here at this house is that the trees were not giving me the privacy I really wanted. 
So last year I removed the three trees and I planted these beautiful green giants and they're very lush, dense, and very, very tall. I didn't want to have to wait, so I want them extra tall. The neighbor was fantastic because we were able to bring these trees from her yard through to my yard, not disturbing my gardens at all. That was ideal. Uh, great neighbors are very important. So the key is now to have year-round privacy because they don't lose their leaves and it's nice and tall and private. And I picked up a nice lawn so the dogs can enjoy this great open space. As we come into this garden area here, you'll see these beautiful terrain planters. And at night they're uplit. And it's just such a architectural detail that just comes to life at nighttime. And this is a pretty little walkway to an arbor and a gate that takes you to the front yard. Now, five years ago, I had this crazy cuckoo idea that I would build a new fireplace and I would also build the terrace. In doing that, I devastated this entire side property. So now I've been uh, really working on, now that the heartscape is all settled and that work is done, it's more about the garden now and planting and bringing it back. This is a really pretty area to sit, but most importantly, it's a flowering garden and we have lilacs, we have beautiful, this is a star clematis that's getting ready to bloom. So there's a lot of interest. Winter, spring, summer, and fall is how I plan my garden because when all the flowers are spent and everything's gone, you still want to have structure and you still want to have interest. So that's why the evergreens, the tutors, the parterre gardens, and all the boxwoods create this beautiful anchor. And then you have the planters that are lit and that becomes a little bit of a sculpture as well in the garden, which really for me just gives me that extended bonus of being inside, but being able to appreciate what's coming in the spring by still seeing the heartscape of the garden. As we come up to the landing on the second floor, this was really an important component of my overall design when I was working on this house for functionality and beauty. There was a massive wall here and it closed off the staircase and I knew right away I needed to open up that wall. But of course, when I did that, all the plumbing for the primary bedroom was right here. So they said to me, we can open it two and a half feet. And I said, Two and a half feet? No, I need it really open. So we had to relocate all the plumbing so I could have it nice and open. And I think it was the right thing to do, but uh, it was a little unexpected to discover that. But looking back, so worth it for sure. Now there are three rooms on this floor as well as a laundry and a bathroom as well. I'll take you into what I call the media room, which is a bedroom, but I use it more as a media room. This is a very casual room. This is where I watch television. I could read the paper here, read some books. It has the best views of the garden, the back garden area. I've done plantation shutters and I did a custom design. I did one big louver below and then I broke it up with two above. And what I like about this is that if I want some privacy, I can completely close it off and shut it off and get some nice privacy, or I can let them stay open. There's some more wonderful art up here as well. The furniture is all about size and scale. The book collection, I have a nice collection from my parents' house that I have here, and I also have some beautiful artwork as well. The furniture is all about size and scale here. To make it work, it has to be all the right size to have it cohabitate together. The coffee table is a glass coffee table, which I just wanted it to disappear. So zero visual impact in the room because it just disappears. And then of course these 
chairs. Uh, club chairs are just upholstered in a wonderful fabric and they're very comfortable to sit in. So you can have a delightful conversation up here while watching a movie on the television. So this is my media room, AKA the bedroom. That's not being used for that. But if you want an overnight guest and somebody wants to stay at Roseburg Gardens, I'll show you where they stay. So here's the guest room. So, this is where people really want to come and stay. Now, when I renovated that fireplace downstairs, I only had one window in this room. So I took the window from the terrace area that I had downstairs where I put a door and I brought it up here to have a nice double window. And I also went from a queen size bed to a full size bed. And I'll tell you why. If they don't love each other, they shouldn't be sleeping here. So the full size bed is better scale and it just looks better in the room. The nightstands can breathe. I wanted a Serena Lily bed. I went with a very pale blue. I did a, a very interesting back architectural interest wall. I added some lighting and I also curated pieces that have stories. So we have a new bed. We have new nightstands, new lamps, but when you flip on this side, there's some great art. And this is kind of really the ocean room because it's all about boats, if you notice. And this piece is a funny story. When I renovated the house across the street, this was a dining room table that they had when they first got married 35 years ago. And we used half of it. I restored it and we put it up against the wall in their foyer. And I kept the second part and I used it for staging quite a bit. And when I was redoing this room, I wanted to find something that wasn't perfect, but was interesting. And I went back to the storage unit. I love all the inlay details. I added some caster and had it painted the high gloss and it just worked perfectly in this space. Found this at an antique center and had it reupholstered. Nice little bench. And I'm just obsessed with cane and bamboo. And this little tiny chair was just so sweet. And the moment I changed out the seat and added a pillow and a throw, it just got a brand new future. And it's just perfect when it comes to this space because there's places to sit, but there's also visual interest as well. Let's go into the heart of the house. It's not the kitchen here, it's my office. So here is Mar headquarters. Now I have a television show on Amazon Prime and I have an assistant. I also have a real estate company as well. So between those two parts of the business, this office is used quite a bit as well as the garden studio. And this is where it all happens. This is where we come together with ideas. This is where we plan out the schedule. Everyone has a computer. Everyone has access to their own phone. And this is technically a bedroom, but very early on when I moved here, I felt that I needed an office. And as COVID has underscored, now home offices are key to being successful because now people aren't commuting as much. So I had this up and going and it was just perfect because uh, we did not miss a beat. We continued to produce great new episodes. We continue to have great listings. And this is where it all happens. This is where we come together with our ideas. The once closet has turned into more of a acknowledgement of some successes. There's my Tully Award and also some personal photographs of friends and family. But file cabinet storage is key. Here is everything that's related to the business. On this side, we have a great space for getting inspired for fabrics, textures, wallpapers. This is where it's all housed. As you can see, it's kind of exploding. But looking for the right carpet, we have the sample here. We go through this and just make sure that 
what we have is not discontinued. And when we do a design project, we're able to lay out color tone story and really give people an understanding of what the palette is going to look like and make some recommendations. But it's always nice to be able to see things up front before you dive too deep into it. That way you know exactly what your client likes and it's easier to get to the finish line. And everyone wants to get to the finish line quickly and on budget. All right, so we're at the top floor of the Treehouse of Roseburg Gardens. Here is my curated sport coat clothing collection. Now, I built this entire area to be inspired by a boutique store uh, retail because I wanted to see the things that I've curated and collected over the decades, and I wanted to be able to use them. So this was a great way to actually see everything, but most importantly, when I designed this, I wanted the glass to be able to highlight the working buttons on all my sports coats. That's an important part of what um, I like when it comes to a sport coat. I want the buttons to work, and by having it just underneath, you can actually see all the working buttons. It's lit, but the secret that you would never know is that right behind this is my furnace area. So I had to design these closets not only for them to be functional, to show off and to have all the drawers accessible, but I also needed to make sure that if I needed to access the furnace, how do I do that? How will they access the furnace? I can't have them jump behind. So this and this, these two are on casters. So they pull out, giving you access to the furnace for any servicing. In the event I have to replace the furnace in another 30 years, both of them come out. But for access and maintenance, we pull this out, they go in, do what they need to do, and then it slides right back into space. The best part about this is that when you slide it out, the lighting doesn't turn off. Pretty cool. So the wire is nice and long. And you'll also notice here some great storage area. This was all customized. I did this. Uh, little insane jeans all lined up. Shoes. And of course, I wanted to have a folding station as well. So I created a little folding station or a workstation up here. I'm up nice and tall, so I look down at all the other houses from up here. Because this is technically what would have been an attic area, I wanted to really remove every element out of the space and reconstruct it and make it really utilizing every corner I could possibly use. There is some storage right behind the bed. I didn't go with your traditional nightstands. I wanted something that was more interesting. I have plenty of storage, so storage was not an issue. I love the Jaliska lighting. Jaliska lighting gives a nice reflection in the room. Right behind here is storage that runs the entire front of the house. So that's where my suitcases are kept. Uh, I shiplapped the ceiling. I also made sure that I foam insulated this top floor. And in doing that, it became more energy efficient as well because you lose a lot of heat and cooling from the top floor. So by foam insulation, it kept everything within the house, making it nice and, and uh, temperature control is very, very easy in this space. So this area is really where I have storage, but I also have a moment of beauty of things that I really have cult cultivated and wanted to feature. This is the iconic Birkin hack bag, which is uh, one of my favorite pieces to travel with. It's only been out once to Paris, but it proudly stays here. Uh, to remind me that uh, I need to live and I need to travel. I have, of course, because I'm a rider and a jumper, I needed to have my Hermes uh, horses uh, as well. And it reminds me of my two little girls. 
And then of course the Birkin 40, which is a travel bag, a smaller bag, is ideal. And that has not seen the light of day. It's just kind of tucked away in there. But I can sit in bed, I could read beyond my computer, and I could look out and see the things that I really worked hard for and that I love. And this to me is a reminder of, okay, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing because I'm able to share my life, share my home and enjoy these pieces that I've cultivated over the decades as well. One thing you will learn very quickly about me is that I do love a good orange box and I never throw them out, I save them. So I wanted, when I built this, they said, oh, let's just take it all the way to the ceiling and give you a lot more storage area that you can uh, light up as well. And I said, what am I going to do with all my boxes? So I said, no, let's bring it down and give me a flat area where I could stack my boxes and just have it be part of the overall decor as well. And everyone always comments about it, uh, but it is a little bit of my passion. It's something that I love. I make it a point that wherever I go when I'm traveling, I pick up a little something to remind me of that trip. And of course, I never get rid of the box. Shiplap, a wonderful sizal industrial carpet is in the bedroom here. Uh, ideal if you have pets. Uh, the color palette is very uh, earthy. It's complemented by blue and the sage green. And when you think about, you have storage, you have a lovely bed, which is a Serena and Lily bed as well, that organic element. There's light reflection, something new, something old. You have something here that is very, very old that I put in here. I wanted something that wasn't perfect, but told a story, found this at a antique uh, place in the Hamptons and it spoke to me and I said, you're coming home. The bench at the end of the bed is twofold. One, it helps the puppies jump into bed. And yes, I sleep with my dogs. And it also has a nice practical aspect to it because here I can sit and I can put my shoes on. I can take a look at what sport coat I'm going to wear uh, before I start my day. Home is where you are safe, where you feel you can grow as a person, professionally, individually, your family. Uh, I love dogs. I have two miniature schnauzers. So home can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. It could be just the brick and mortars. But for me, I dig deep. Uh, and I find that my home is my protector. We've all experienced storms, bad weather. Um, this COVID period was devastating, but I felt that I was nesting in a wonderful place and I was extremely blessed. And for me, putting my head on my pillow and knowing that I have created an environment where I feel that safe and that wonderful is truly what gets me up each and every day to do a great job and to live my life. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.